just joining us. It was a brutal day for the bulls on Wall Street. The Dow closing lower by more than 1,000 points. The S&P 500 falling 3%. And the Nasdaq and Russell 2000 both plunging nearly 3.5%. Joining us now is Torsten Slock, chief economist at Apollo Global Manage Management. Torsten, uh, thanks for being with me today. Part of what is, I guess, being propelled with this narrative uh, around Wall Street is this idea that or fear that the Fed is behind the curve and cutting, given the fact that we have seen softening economic data. How do you see it? Well, I think that's premature to come to that conclusion. I mean, think about it. Literally, just before Friday, the narrative was this is a soft landing. It's supported by inflation coming down. If you look at the data, as Jay Powell says, in the totality of what's been coming in, you've seen in GDP growth in the second quarter was 2.8. You saw retail sales in June that was strong. If you look at the daily data for how many people travel on airplanes, it's still strong. The daily data for how many people in open table eat at restaurants is still strong. The weekly data for retail sales, for hotel bookings, Broadway show attendance, Across the board, you're just not seeing this economy slow down in the significant way that markets are implying. So that's why uh, looking at, again, as Jay Powell said, the totality of the data, we think that it's misguided to price in all these cuts. Uh, Bespoke today said based on the level of the two-year Treasury yield, markets are now pricing in 175 basis points of rate cuts from the Fed. It's a huge amount. It, is, that, is that possible without a recession? I would say no, uh, and I don't think we'll have a recession. I still think it will be a soft landing. Of course, if the market, meaning the stock market, continues to go down over the coming weeks and months ahead of us, of course, then you will have a self-reinforcing dynamic where it will ultimately be at least raising the risk of a recession. But where we sit today, the data is simply not justifying the significant amount of cuts. The market is making the same mistake that it did at the beginning of the year when we was pricing in six or seven cuts because the data where we sit right now, just look at ISM today, it was up. ISM prices paid was up here for services and employment was also up. So, yes, we have a light data week. Next week we get retail sales. We also get inflation. But at this point, it's just simply premature to come to the conclusion that the economy is sliding into a recession. And we keep talking about things like the yen carry trade and the technicals and some of the dynamics that are at play, not just in, in the U.S. equity market, but in other markets across the globe right now. And it highlights a key point, which is that there is a big divergence afoot currently between the biggest central banks of the biggest economies in the world, Japan obviously being case in point today. But how much is this affecting the trading we are seeing on a daily basis? So that's right, Morgan. I think this is really, really important. And exactly as you're highlighting, it is very unusual. We literally had within a few days that one major central bank, namely the BOJ, was raising interest rates. And another central bank, namely the Fed, was talking about rate cuts. The implication of this over the last three weeks has been that dollar yen has moved from 161 to currently 144. That is a major move for anyone who's borrowing in yen and investing in the U.S. And it used to be the case that the carry trade was simply someone borrowing in Japanese fixed income and investing in U.S. fixed income, most notably in treasuries, but also in investment grade credit. But that trade began to run out of steam when people started widening out and saying, hey, maybe from an implied vol perspective, I should also be taking some of my borrowed money from Japan and invested in the Magnificent Seven. So that's why we've seen the carry trade widen out to not only be in fixed income, to also be in equities. And that's a very important reason why that dynamic is now beginning to reverse the trades that are exactly one of the key reasons why the Magnificent Seven has been underperforming so much, simply because the carry trade is unwinding as a result of dollar yen moving so significantly in such a short period of time. Mm, some good context there. Um, I do want to ask about credit spreads, because it's something you've done a lot of work on. We've talked about it in the past. We did see a pop there as well. How close are you watching that now? Well, absolutely. If you look at IG spreads and high yield spreads, they are now basically back to where they were in the beginning of the year. So that's a different way of saying that in credit, you've had a significant drawdown in the last few days as a result of spread widening. What's, of course, very important in that context is that if we do get a hard landing. Well, certainly then equities should be lower and credit spread should be wider. But given that the incoming data, again, continues to justify a soft landing, we will have to wait and see for the next several weeks whether the data is still as steady as it's been for literally the last uh, really 12 months. But if we do get 
a sharper slowdown, then certainly spread widening in credit can be justified and lower equities can be justified. But at this point, there really is very little data other than the small increase in the unemployment rate and the slightly lower non-farm payrolls number we got on Friday that talks about when we are going to get a hard landing. It really still continues to look very much like a soft landing.